Hi everyone, in this video we will be seeing about odontogenic keratocyst. So this is a developmental odontogenic cyst. This comes under the classification of a developmental odontogenic cyst. As the name implies we can understand that the cyst has odontogenic origin and also it contains keratin within its cystic cavity. Now why should we know about this odontogenic keratocyst? It is important to know about this cyst for two main reasons. First is the cyst may grow to such a large size even before it has been clinically diagnosed. And the next is because the cyst has a very high rate of recurrence, we need to know in detail about this cyst. The term odontogenic keratocyst was given by Philipson in the year 1956. Moving on to the etiopathogenesis of odontogenic keratocyst, two main sources have been suggested for the origin of odontogenic keratocyst. The first is the dental lamina and its remnants and the next source of origin are the basal cells of the overlying epithelium, oral epithelium. So basal cells of the overlying oral epithelium. Now first let us see about this dental lamina and the remnants. Recollecting dental lamina after its participation in odontogenesis will remain as remnants called as cell res of serine. So when these cell res, when they are genetically abnormal, when these cell res of serine, when they are genetically abnormal and also when they have an exuberant proliferating capacity they can give rise to this odontogenic keratocyst okay now moving on to the basal cells of the overlying oral epithelium these are called by two names that is basal cell offshoots and basal cell hamashias why are these suggested as the etiology for the odontogenic keratocyst it is again because of two reasons the first reason is that studies have shown the that the odontogenic keratocyst are attached to the overlying oral epithelium through fenestrations in the bone okay and also another possible reason suggesting the basal cells as an etiology is because this is first reason the second reason it is uh, because of the it, it, sorry of the ectomesenchymal influence okay of the ectomesenchymal influence shown by this ectomesenchymal cells over the basal cells in the tooth bearing areas of the jaws in the tooth bearing areas of the jaws another etiology that has been suggested for the sporadic cases of odontogenic keratocyst is the nevoid basal cell carcinoma gene so loss of heterozygosity in this region can always result in sporadic cases of odontogenic keratocyst Next we can see about the clinical features of the odontogenic keratosis discussed under the following headings. The most common age of occurrence of odontogenic keratosis is the second to the third decade of life and majority of the people are male that is the lesion has a male predilection okay. And what is the most common site is the mandibular molar ramus region the mandibular posterior that is the molar ramus region moving on to the size usually the cyst is 4 centimeter or greater than 4 centimeter but 
In case of the maxillary lesions, the cyst is usually diagnosed even in a smaller size because it has more tendency to get infected in case of the maxillary lesion. Most patients will be free of symptoms until the cyst is going to extend to involve either the sinus or the ascending ramus. Then let us see about the extent. What are the possibilities where the cyst can extend? The cyst can extend into the maxillary sinus displacing the maxillary uh, sorry displacing the floor of the orbit and also destructing the floor of the orbit. Okay, this destruction of the orbital floor will result in proptosis of the eyeballs. It can also result in extension into the infratemporal fossa. And the cyst can also extend into the base of the skull. And finally, it can also directly extend into the orbit. The cyst has a tendency to expand within the medullary cavity of the bones. So, since it is going to expand within the medullary cavity of the bones, there is not going to be obvious swelling in most of the cases. This swelling is absent in most of the cases and the cyst is usually radiographically only mostly diagnosed. Okay. In spite of that, sometimes the patients can also present with symptoms of pain, symptoms of paresthesia, symptoms of any discharge and symptoms of pathological fractures and also the patients can complain of displacement of teeth. These can also be presented in some cases about the number of the cyst, the cyst can either present as a single cyst or it can also be as a multiple cyst. So whenever a single cyst has been diagnosed, then we have to carefully look into the radiograph for presence of any other additional cyst. Similarly, multiple cysts are most common or mostly seen in neoid basal cell carcinoma syndromes. So therefore, any multiple odontogenic keratocyst patient has to be carefully investigated for the presence of other features of this nevoid basal cell carcinoma syndrome. Radiographically, the lesions appear as ovoid or round radiolucency with well-defined sclerotic margins. Unilocular as well as multilocular radiolucency can be present. Usually, there is no bony expansion present 